that the nations will gather around us like a people may gather around feast or food and we say since we they using us or seeing us as a qasa'a as a food itself and they are the akala we are in this situation when the people where the people are very difficult in very difficult situation to prosper and some of you may ask what are the ways out and what can we do therefore listen to the interpretation of this basic hadith this sahabi ka'b radiyallahu anhu is narrating very unique incident that took place between the sahaba and the messenger of allah he said the messenger of allah was sitting with the companions and all of a sudden a young man shab with a lot of strength physically strong but he was not only physically strong but he was very active a man who have a strength the desire to act upon what he upon what he wants to do and accomplish very active and not only that he got up early in the morning to start his business or to start his job and the Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah they saw how he looks and how active he is and that he's got up early to do the job so they assume that do whatever he's doing is not for the sake of Allah and there is a lesson here so they said Wayhahada, woe to that man as though he committed a sin he did something wrong woe to him if only this is strength and activeness is for the sake of Allah and at that time this term fi sabilillah was used for in terms of jihad fi sabilillah fi sabilillah means if this man was really mujahid giving his strength and energy for the sake of Allah in the battlefield that would be far better than what he's doing at this moment so the messenger of Allah look what he said he said la taqulu hadha don't do this do not judge people because you see it, him doing certain things stop being judgmental don't put on the scale don't say he is this and that without you knowing the reality of his situation so he said you're not allowed to say this you're not allowed to assume you cannot assume and then he explained to them and he said three different scenarios one in Canada if this man this individual this particular person is getting early in the morning to take care of himself so he can be self-sufficient he's not living with his parents he's not relying on them after they raised him perhaps paid his education that he never completed he never finished because he needed a year off to think through things or he needs time off because he's been going through high school on the first two years of university man my god he needs a break you know cheeseburger generation this is what they want so he said if this man is doing this to take care of himself not relying on anyone else he is indeed he's a mujahid He's like the man who's fighting the battlefield. 
fi sabilillah. This is a personal need. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or if he's taking care of his elder or old parents, he has his father, his mother, he says, and they are weak. Oh, or he's taking care of the Riyya, his children, offspring, of the Af, who are weak. He is doing, he is for the sake of Allah. However, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Kana Yasa Tafahuran Watakathuran Fahua Fisa Yishay. See the difference, Ikhwati Fila. Exact the same act, same process. You get up early in the morning, you go to your school, or to your work, or to your business, or to your job. But the intention is to take care of your, yourself and your parents and your family and your, those who are dependent on you. But the, on the other hand, if you're doing because you want the people to say, look what he has. Look the type of vehicle that he drives. Look at the nice house that he's living in. Look at the fence. Look at the front yard. Look how green the, the, the landscape is. Look at the flowers. Look at that little dog that's running around. Look at this. Is this is Qal Fahuwa fi sabili shaytan. This is not fi sabili Allah. This is fi sabili shaytan. See, Islam will never approve. Never approve. For young people to sit in the masajid or to sit in the basement of their parents playing video games and then assume this is what they need to do. Islam will say no. You can't be in the masjid not having a job not having responsibility Neglecting your personal need and the need of your family and your community and pray a righteous God in the masjid. No. لذلك عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه في عام الرماد the most difficult year of his life he found young people in the masjid. Shaba, youth. So he said, what are you doing in the masjid? قالوا يا أمير المؤمنين نسأل الله We're sitting in the masjid of Allah, in the masjid, the base of Bayt Allah and we ask Allah to provide. He said, really? Jesse, stay where you are. I'll be back. And Barakallahu him. they thought that Umar bin Khattab, he would go to the Bayt al-Mal al-Muslimin and he would slaughter from the animals of the Sadaq and he would ask his servant to make fresh bread for these young people in the masjid. And he would bring some rice and he would serve them. But Umar bin Khattab, he forgot his durra, his stick at home. He said, I'll be back. Just stay where you are. And he went to the house and brought the stick. And he closed the door and started lashing them. And he said, you're sitting in the, in the, in the bait of Allah. And you say, Allah, Allah, while you're certain that the sky will never rain gold nor silver, get out. I got a job. Be active. Be someone in your community. Be a business minded person. Be a businessman. See, subhanallah. In our society, in Muslim society in the West, we don't need doctors. I'm extremely against the students who go for medical. I'm against it. Because as far as I can remember, we've been producing doctors left and right. However, not a single hospital. We all work for the Kufa. Wallahi alhamd, go to the Jew hospitals and the best doctors are Muslims. Go to any medical center, the best doctors are Muslims. I don't need doctors. 
We need business people. One, people who are self-employed. Your own business. You leave your job for Salat al Jum'ah and you don't, you don't need to write a letter or request to your boss or place nice and simple for him to give you the few hours off. No. We need people in education. We need people in media. And the fourth, we need people in marketing. These are the dire need of your community. Nothing else. A lot of young people, what are you studying? Public health. Allahu Akbar. Public health. Barakallahu Akbar. What are you going to do with public health? I'm going to work in the hospital. See, Muslims have to be business minded. Like that young man. He got up early in the morning to take care of his business. In Sunani Abi Da'ud, a man came to the messenger of Allah and he said, Ya Rasulullah, give me something from the wealth of the Muslims. Give me sadaqah. The man, the messenger of Allah said, Do you have anything in your house? Anything whatsoever. He thought of Barqal a hat. Piece of sheep. Qalu nafrishu ba'ad. He says, some of it, we put it on the floor, and the second part we cover ourselves with. And then he thought, and he said, and a container, from that we drink. No microwave, no sophisticated electri electri electrical stove, no, simple things, two things. He said, bring them to me. He brought them to me. No. To him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the masjid, fi sunan Abi Dawud, he raised them up. Qala man yashtari hada, who would buy this? One of the sahaba said, I will purchase it, O Messenger of Allah, for one dirham. Messenger of Allah didn't like the offer. He repeated, man yashtari, who would buy this? For the third time, one of the sahaba said, to Ya Rasulullah. He said, they are yours. He said to this young man, come, take this dirham, feed your family with that dirham. The other dirham, go to the market, bring me an axe, and I will put a wooden handle on that. He brought it and he said, now go, I don't want to see you for 15 days. I don't want to see you. After 15 days, the man came back with 10 dirhams. Nice, brand new thaw. Food at home. And he said, which one is better now? Taking care of yourself or keep coming back to the people? Which one is better? Of course, the independent. See, subhanAllah, even at the time when we are in the middle of ibadah, the act of worship, Allah says, no, do business. In the hajj, they say, alaykum junahan tabtaghu fadla min rabbikum. During the month of hajj, فَإِذَا أَفَدْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ عِنْدَ مَشْعَرِ الْحَرَمِ In Haram, in, the, in Mecca, while you're doing and performing hajj, labbaik Allahumma labbaik. You say, this is five dollars. Would you really like to purchase it? Nothing is wrong with that. You're doing a dhikr. This is what it is. Muslims do not have day off. They don't have day off. The day of Jum'ah, what did Allah say? What did Allah say? Ya ayuhal ladina amanu ida nudiya li salati min yawm al Jum'ah. Fas'aw ila dhikr Allah. Walk to the remembrance of Allah. Go to the masjid. What should we do, Allah? فَإِذَا قُلِيَتِ الصَّلَاةِ When the salah is over, فَابْتَقُوا Now get up. فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَقُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Now go back to your business. The salah is finished. Salatul Jum'ah is finished. 
whether you're in Muslim country, not Muslim country, go back to your work, go back to your rizq. Of course, we don't mean give yourself to this dunya, but we mean balance it. رِجَالُ لَا تُقِيمْ تِجَارَةً وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Be like that people, those people. Men who business a commercial person would not distract them from the remembrance of Allah and they in the masajid. Time for salam, time for ibadah, be in the masjid. Think, why would you be under the mercy of someone?